Hello guys, Megagraph1702 again. If you have, if you already have watched the Loudness War video, just skip to around two minutes of this video. If you have not watched it, watch it together with me. This is how the so-called Loudness War is damaging the sound quality of modern CDs. First, I'll play an example of a track from 1989. Notice the clarity and punch of the drums. Since the two drum hits are already maximum volume, if we want the track louder on the recording, we have to take the quieter bits and turn them up. If this track had been released in 2006, someone would probably have insisted that it be this loud. Now it sounds much louder, and in the short term, louder can seem better. But you own the volume knob, not the record producer. So you adjust your volume to find your preferred level. Here we have the same volume as the original. Unfortunately, the loudness treatment permanently changes the sound. Do you notice what's missing? The red sections mark where the punch and clarity would have been. Let's hear what that maximized track sounds like at regular listening volume. Wimpy loud sound. All the punch of the drums is gone, along with much of the feel of the music that comes from some parts being louder than others. When there's no quiet, there can be no loud. The original makes you turn up your volume, and when you do, it sounds great. Great song. The same principle applies to video games. For example, here I have a sound of a pistol that's being shot three times. As you can see, as you can clearly see, here are the peaks. So this is the power and the punch, which makes the pistol sound very nice and exciting. Now, because the, the high volume parts are very short, our ears don't notice them as being too loud. If it would be longer, it would be a pain in the in the ears and in the ear, but since it's so short, these transients, so-called short, are so short, it's not a problem. Now, if I use a limiter, which is nothing else but a compressor with a very quick attack and release time, this thing will sound very loud. So I'm gonna make it quieter first. Okay. And it's louder, so it's more exciting, right? Well, yes, but look what happens to the waveform. You see that? All the punch is gone. All the clarity is gone. And also, in order not to go deaf, I have to lower the volume... ...by a lot. So, yeah, sure, it's more exciting when it's loud. But when you put it back to regular vo uh, listening volume... I much prefer this sound over here. This is dynamic range, guys. Difference between the highest and the lowest parts of a sound. And you have to have that if you want to have convincing, powerful sound. In addition, I want to talk a little bit about dynamic range in real life and games. As you can see, for example, Gunfire has a volume or a sound pressure level of roughly 150 decibels. 150 decibels is gonna kill your ears, absolutely. So if you think you want your sound realistic, well, you better say goodbye to your hearing. Because here's the thing, I prepared a little example, a little scene, a sound scene, um, full of PR sounds. And I will show you that, for example, the quietest sounds that you can hear, the ambient sounds, are already at... minus 33 decibels. So that's around 33 decibels of dynamic range, okay? Um, let me play this for you. Dynamic range gives me a lot of awesome space. The gunfire is minus six decibels, so it's half the vo half the power of. 
the maximum volume. The maximum volume is reserved for explosions. The hand grenades, the small ones, are also at minus 6 decibels, but the big explosions, such as for example big C4 charges or artillery, are at minus 0. It means that they're, they're gonna stand out especially. As you can clearly hear in the next example, which is a bit more... There's more stuff going on. And the final example has a vehicle uh, sound in it that's looping. This whole scene takes place within 30 decibels, roughly 30 decibels of dynamic range. So you see, you don't need the, the realistic dynamic range of, in order for stuff in games to sound good. This is great, for example, for tanks and stuff. Basically, what I want to show here is that dynamic range is important, but you, there is a certain limit. If you have a too big of a dynamic range, yeah, for, for example, yeah, if you have too big of a dynamic range, the players will have to turn up their volume to a very high level, and then if a sound comes in with, which, with a very high volume, such as this sound, the big explosion, it's really going to hurt their ears or maybe break their audio systems. Alright, that's that. I hope this was interesting.